Welcome back to another episode of Talent Talk. Whatever your listening preference, you can find our feature interviews on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, and of course on UNFOspreys.com. Don't miss our chats with student athletes, coaches, alumni, and Ospreys and the pros. Now, let's get to today's episode. Welcome back to another edition of Talent Talk. Uh, a really cool story and, and a great guest. I uh, got to know him the last couple of years is, is coming on the show. Thanks for being on, JT. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. So for everybody that doesn't know, uh, a lot of people do know you from your time on the court here at UNF, did some good things, but give a quick intro of yourself. Yeah, well, my name is JT. Um, obviously, I played uh, my last three years of college basketball at UNF, um, started my career at Ole Miss, um, transferred over to UNF and spent the last four years there, had to, had to redshirt the, the first year. Um, but um, since then, um, obviously, the season got cut short um, because of the coronavirus and all that stuff. We had a great season, um, got cut short since then. My wife and I have moved back to Tallahassee um, and started some, some new things here and kind of planted our feet here for, for the long haul, we think. And so, um, yeah, this has been a lot, of, a lot of cool things, a lot of changes and, you know, trying to, trying to roll with it. So for, for everybody, JT put up over a thousand points in his career, um, was one of our best options from beyond the arc. And Hey, I've seen you get up sometimes on some dunks too. And so you've got (laughs) some hops, man. And uh, you know, you surprise some people I'm sure with that, but you, you know, you can do a lot of different things on the court and you did a lot of good things for, for UNF. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, give a, you know a little bit of an insight. You could go into a lot because I know some people know a little bit of your backstory, but give a little insight onto you know how you came back to UNF after starting at Ole Miss. For sure. Um, well, I actually my my relationship with Coach Driscoll started my junior year of high school. Um, UNF was my first scholarship offer um, out of high school, and so I got to know Coach D and the staff. And at the co- at the time, Coach Taylor when when he was still there, I actually knew his dad pretty well. Okay. Um, he trained me a lot in, in Tallahassee. And so I had a good relationship with him, um, you know, out, coming into my senior year, ended up committing to Ole Miss, um, played my freshman year there, you know, a lot of just learning curve that the freshmen go to, you know, you go from being the man in high school, yeah. to, uh, you know, going on to college where everybody was the man and, and, you know, fighting for minutes. And honestly, a, a lot of it for me there was not knowing how to handle that and kind of, you know, just really struggling going back and forth. And so it wasn't, wasn't the best year for me at athletically, but it was a great learning experience. Like, man, like actually what it takes, you know, to be, to be successful, um, uh, you know, in, in sport, but then also just a great maturing experience um, mm-hmm. being away from home and, and all those things. But after, after that first year, you know, decided that um, would like um, to transfer and, and, and really a big part of it was knowing coach Driscoll and his staff and what they stand for and, and all those things. And wasn't that, you know, Ole Miss was, was, was bad by any means, but it, it was, you know, I, I just felt like that was honestly the, the direction that the guy was kind of taking me in. And, and from the relationship I had already built with them, I knew like, man, like that's, that's some, somewhere that I would like to go and, and someone that I would love to play for. And anybody who knows coach D, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? There's like, not a, <laughs> like there's, there's nobody who loves you more. You know right. what I mean? And, yeah. and you know, it's, it, it's, it's great. And truly a blessing to have been able to play for somebody like that. Cause you play a lot harder for, for someone like that, who, who, who pushes you harder than anybody is, as hard on you as in anybody else <laughs> would be, but you can, you, you can tell you because it, at the end of the day, you know, like, man, like this, this guy would do anything for me. What was that year like for you transitioning from Ole Miss to now being at UNF to different conference, you know, um, and how did you get your feet underneath you being like, all right, this is okay that I'm at a new school? Yeah. Um, you know, I think a big part of that transition being being smoother was, again, the staff being so intentional about, like, establishing the culture and coming into a new place and really helped me with a lot of, you know, that, that year for me was a big – another big growing year because there were some things like, again, you know – part of my problem early on this was something one of the first things they addressed to me I would just overwork myself because like mm-hmm. all right I'm not planning on doing this so I just need to like work 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 but I was wearing down my body and really the, my issue was more so up here and really yeah. okay learning more aspects of letting my IQ grow and all all those types of things and so they were really able to help me in that season like I look like the problem is not spending time on the court but really taking time to learn those those other things and um you know they they, they do such an incredible job of establishing that culture early on and 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 one thing that I think UNF does as well as anywhere I mean as a school and then as a 
basketball programs, man, like they, it really is family. Mm -hmm. And so even, you know, on my visit, I already felt like I was a part of the family. Sure. And so that, you know, you talk about transitioning in at that time when I came to UNF, I had been to, I think, five different schools in five years in a row. Mm -hmm. So I've been, you know, went somewhere in my junior year high school, transferred my senior year, played at a prep school, played at Ole Miss and now at UNF. So it's a lot of different changes. But one thing, man, like as soon as I stepped on campus, I felt a part of that family. Mm -hmm. And so when you feel at home somewhere, it's going to make that transition, you know, way easier and way smoother. And I knew the second I got here, I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is where I'll, where I'll finish out, you know? So um, a really cool story. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's been fun to, to see UNF become that home for you. Um, that first year that you were here, you started off and you put up good numbers right away. Um, what clicked for you on the court? Obviously you had the ability, you got a scholarship to play at an SEC school, but what was clicking on the court for you? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me, again, going kind of looking beyond the basketball part, like my my quote unquote issues, right, with maybe why I underachieved sometimes were not because of ability or whatever, but it was up here in my mind, right? And so part of, for me, what I did really well was shoot the ball, right? Mm -hmm. But so much of my career, I would try to spend proving that I can do other things, right? Yeah. To be a point guard, trying to do other things. When in reality, that just wasn't me. And one thing Coach, Coach Riskell and the staff helped me do was like, dude, like, this is what you're good at. Why be ashamed of that? Mm -hmm. Right. And so really like it was, and I, I think why we were so good, especially our senior year was that everybody bought into their roles, you know? And so it's about knowing what your role is doing that the absolute best that you can and really buying into it. And that was, I, I think the biggest thing for me was the first time I really realized, okay, this is what I've been gifted to do. This is my role on this team. And for us to be successful, I just need to do that well. And that takes a lot of pressure because then you're not trying to be great at things you're not actually great at, mm -hmm. right? You know, you know, for, for, you know, just on the, Yvonne was the best point guard I've ever played with. He facilitated, handled the ball, whatever. I don't need to have the ball in my hands, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. have Carter, Garrett, all, all these different, we all had a role in settling into that. And we're like, that, that gives you confidence. Oh, this is what I'm good at. I, I don't have to try to be something that I'm not. So that was definitely the biggest piece for me that really clicked coming into UNF. And, it, 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 you know, especially last year, I remember, you know, walking to a game and knowing it was going to be two, Wajid, three, JT, 10, Yvonne, 11, Garrett, 23, Carter. It was that starting lineup the whole time. It was consistent. Yeah, you knew who the five were going to be. And you guys found your role. And all of you, obviously, that's the birds of Trey, could shoot the ball. I, I never knew who was going to go off on, you know, hitting the three on any right. particular game. It could be right. any of you guys, right. you know, and sometimes it was you and, and you had some, you know, a number of 28, 27 point games. What have you learned um, in terms of, you know, how to run a practice or, you know, insides of basketball that you've applied already to what we're going to talk about next equal shot? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, now, now being on the other side of right, mm -hmm. a player to now more of coaching and teaching all those things. The thing I, I, I really take away that's so special about UNF's culture. What I learned is like, man, the efficiency, the level of excellence that coach Riscoll and the staff uphold and, and everything that they do, like you, you don't expect anything less than your absolute hardest, your absolute best, utmost respect for who you work, all those things. But we, man, we work at a pace. You know what I mean? There's no waste of time. Everything is planned out. There's a practice plan. We're going down the line and we're not punching the clock. So let's say, you know, it's planned to take two hours to get through everything. We may get through it in an hour and a half because we're just having a great day, boom, and then we get through it, then it's done. And so definitely a, a big thing, you know, small things, just like being early to things. You know, Coach Rich was saying early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Things like that, being early to things, and never, you know, not being like that, that shows a lot, man, that like, I actually care to be here, that this, all those small things about culture, you know, being on this side, I now see, oh, that's why that's so important. All those little things that people don't think about, tucking your shirt in, you know, make sure that just no cussing in the gym, you know, just all like these time, these small things that like, you know, you're kind of in it like, yeah, it's, but like, you don't really understand the importance of it until stepping back. For me, I look at it like, oh, that's how you build a championship culture. Mm -hmm. And so being on this side, those are things that, that I definitely, you know, I joke <laughs> with Coach Diaz, like it's basically like we're running a mini UNF practice over here every time we 
because it's just you know there's no better way to do it in my opinion <laughs> yeah that's funny because when um bmo brian morgan showed me one of the videos about you guys just to get a, uh, a breakdown of what you do there he was like it looks like you know you don't have practice right now <laughs> it looks like you know oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and so it's it, it's as me my office is overlooking the arena and i'll peek out and every once in a while i'll watch you guys and just from the the minutia of okay your guys is post practice mats are laid out with the foam rollers exactly where they need to be that cart with all the supplies is out there it's probably in the same exact spot with all the items in the same place every time those little details i'm sure were like an eye opener that wow okay this stuff people are actually paying attention to because it's you know i mean both you and i we playing sports growing up you just think it's all about what's happening on the field of play you yeah. know and it, it's all the and you know it just the and what you really can see about a culture is when with a coaching staff you see does such a great job like for example david ackerman right i knew every mm -hmm. time i come onto the court he's small you talk about small details every basketball with the logo was faced the same way and at the <laughs> same exact angle all throughout the rack and those are like small things that you don't maybe not consciously think about but that all plays into you know what i'm saying like help building that championship court. and so mm -hmm. it's all those and i you know there's tons of examples of, of small things like that but that's you know that's that's how you create that type of culture. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and even if it's, you know, it's okay. The fact that that logo isn't fa is facing a certain way, it's not going to make me shoot a three and make it, but what it's going to do is it's going to subconsciously tell you, okay, this is the standard, you know, that's, it sets the yeah. standard, um, which I'm sure, you know, you could feed off of immediately when you got to UNF. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. So uh, you guys last year, obviously there was an abrupt ending to the spring. Um, Put put the listener in your mind during in March. What was going through your mind for okay, the CIT is not happening. What's my next step? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny. Really, throughout the whole year, um, you know, my my plan had always been to go play professional basketball to do this. I've been, you know, my lifelong dream. When me and my wife got married, we talked. Hey, you know, we're gonna go play overseas for a few years, get to see the world, stuff like that, and really throughout my senior year, it was like no other way to explain it other than just kind of a, a God thing. Like it was just this overwhelming like piece that like, you know, this was going to be my last year. Mm -hmm. and it was like twofold. It was like, man, like it wasn't, it wasn't like, man, like I don't like basketball anymore. It wasn't whatever, but it was just like this thing, like, oh, it's just, it's time to move on to the next thing after this. And so that, you know, I, I think also helped me because like, man, like it just, it allowed me to put everything into that year. Right. Mm -hmm. so it wasn't like, all right, I'm trying to perform like to impress agents, whatever. It was like, no, nah, like, this is all about this team. And so I, I had already kind of had a sense of, you know, it was time to move on after that year. Obviously it ended way earlier than we expected. Um, but we had known that we wanted to move back to Tallahassee. We just kind of felt a call um, mm -hmm. back, back to this area. Um, and my wife had worked at the church that we're both working at before and was going to go back and work there. And then, you know, towards the end of the year, I, I found out I was going to take over as the youth director and those types of things. But it's crazy just how, how it all, how, you know, we, Lost to Lipscomb, and then we're getting ready for the CIT. You know, I think we're, our, we're it was a Wednesday, and mm -hmm. we're getting ready for our game that was going to be on the following Monday or Tuesday, yep. or whatever, and talk about, okay, maybe there's not going to be fans, all those types of things. We're seeing these other tournaments get shut down. So in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, like, this may not happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so as, as we were getting taped that day, I was, uh, I think, I don't know, Carter was in there or some whatever. I was like, dude, like, this, this may be the last time I ever get taped. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, and so it was, you know, crazy, but – that was in my mind. So like during practice that day, I was, was kind of thinking about that, man. Like I'm, I'm going to really take this thing. This may be, you know, you just never know. And then obviously later that night, they officially canceled it. They called us back in, but it's wild. Like we, we got called back in at uh, 9 PM that night. We had, you know, big team yeah. meeting, we got to go around, kind of put a uh, definitive ending to it. And me and my wife were in Tallahassee that night, you know, already, oh, man. We, yeah. we, we'd already known our next. Wow. Day. Yeah. Over. We were, <laughs> We were literally now I did our stuff, but it was a, you know, a quick, quick turnaround and everything, yeah. you know, everything shut down. Um, so it was definitely a, a weird, a weird time, but it definitely helped that we, we had a sense of where we wanted to go next and where we felt called to go next. And so it yeah. made that transition again, a little bit less, um, you know, abrupt and, and awkward, so to speak. Man, you guys wasted no time. No, yeah. No. And making that happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So what was that first week of life for you? You know, March, whatever it was, 12th to the 19th. Yeah, it was, uh, 
definitely weird. Mm -hmm. Um, just so worked out. So my, my, my brother who, who ran Mm -hmm. track in North Florida, him and his wife actually live in Chattanooga now. Okay. Um, but right after the Lipscomb game, actually the, the next day they were planning to go up and visit because they hadn't officially decided that they were going to go there, but they wanted to go visit. And so he asked me, especially after lodge, like, Hey, do you want to go up with me? They had got an Airbnb, you know, we're going to go up there and just, just kind of see. And so me and him got to go up there and, you know, the long drive up, long drive back. And we, we spent a couple of days in there and hiked up on the mountains or whatever. But that, that couple of days for me, just like to get away from everything, whatever, knowing this was over, whatever, but just allowed you to kind of process everything, right. Just to remove yourself, all those types of things. And, um, you know, just really, okay. Like process like, yeah, you know, the feeling, the sadness of it ended, not the way that you wanted, like it just out of your control, but there's great things ahead. And, you know, we know where we're going and, and, and mm-hmm. all those types of things. So that, that definitely helped that transition again, just kind of getting a step back for, for a moment. Yeah, a little time like that with with a family member can go a long way for sure. And it gets you gets you centered in what you want to choose to do. Um, So give a timeline of of what it was like getting set up. Now you're serving as youth director at Engage. You get you get that you get set up there. Was that um, you mentioned it? Was that set up before the season end ended? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we know now had planned on taking over more so in may you know yeah, when, sure <laughs> everything had gotten over um but yeah that that was already planned um as far as with equal shot and all that stuff which i know we're about to get into but mm-hmm. just like that 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 was already kind of on my that that was honestly a little bit further removed this crazy that just kind of you know jump started once we got here but it, those things had already kind of been planned so we had, you know then as, as soon as we got done I was like okay now let's just kind of speed up the steps a little bit you know? sure sure yeah. um was it always your goal to to be a youth director or a youth pastor or to be involved in the ministry um not necessarily a youth director but mm-hmm. being involved in ministry in some form has definitely always kind of been on my heart mm-hmm. um i became a christian when i was in ninth grade actually through my basketball coach was kind of the one who introduced me to that when he's the pastor and engaged now and and, mm-hmm. and and all those things so it's definitely always been something that's been on my heart and I didn't know if it was going to be, Hey, I'm going to, you know, be a pastor one day or actually be a, a youth leader, or whatever it looked like, or, you know, if basketball was going to be my ministry, right. Cause mm-hmm. I see, you know, whatever it is that our meaningful work, so to speak is like, that's a ministry in and of itself, right. Mm-hmm. The way, you know, just for, for basketball, the way that I would practice and prepare all those things, like that's a form of worship because it's taken the tools that God has given you and making the most of them. And so I knew in some form or fashion, I wanted to be involved, but never really thought about youth ministry in, in particular um, until until the, the opportunity arose. So looking back on that senior year and then your transitioning, you had said to me that your mind was set on taking that step. You weren't going to go play overseas and you felt that peace. When you communicated that, whether it was to your wife or you communicated that to other people, what was their response? Yeah, um, I, you know, I think it was – it was good because, well, first of all, the, the, the people that, you know, I kind of processed that with my wife, pastor Adrian, coach D and mission the two is like, Hey, like, this is what I'm kind of feeling. I'm thinking whatever, like, and just kind of talking through it. This is what I think it is going on. And really, you know, one making sure that I wasn't, that it was coming out of the right place in my heart and not mm-hmm. out of, okay, making sure there wasn't anything. All right. Is this kind of like fear based or anxiety based or whatever? Like, is it, but you know, after really like being able to talk through and realize like, no, this is really like a piece that I feel kind of from God that's come, okay, this is kind of the next step. Then it was like, man, it was nothing but support. Right. And, and, you know, and, and my wife kind of feeling the same thing. We kind of had a mutual idea. Like this is where, you know, for us as a family, us, all those things, like this is where we wanted to go. And it was kind of time to do that. And so it was, it was great. It was great. And just very, very affirming. Sure. And so you have that, you're, you're already doing that for your job. Um, you, you have family um, things going on too. You're welcoming a child hopefully soon. You just okay. let me know that. Um, yeah. And now you're charting equal shot. What is equal shot? Give a, give a quick glimpse of what that is for everybody. Um, it, very cool what you're doing. Yeah. So equal shot is a nonprofit youth program. Um, we're focused a lot right now with with basketball so it's you know kind of a sports center program right now we do you know regular just like skill development training um but we're also you know 
the ultimate goal is to establish this program, quote unquote, academy, right? Where kids can come and kind of like, if you, our mission statement is just to empower youth of all walks of life through three lanes, athletic development, um, oh, athletic training, skill, um, skill acquisition and purpose development. And kind of, you know, what kind of those words mean, right, is the athletic training part. Athletics are so, so valuable for so many different reasons. Not just, not because not every kid is going to go on to play college or want to play professionally, whatever, but there's so many things that sports teach you, right? Being in basketball games or practice, whatever, mm-hmm. you're competing in anything, emotions get high and, mm-hmm. and you want to win and you have to, you have to learn to deal with losses. You have to learn to deal with conflict. You have to learn how to push through pain, how to push through adversity and all these different things. And so there's such a, a value that sports have and so many things being an athlete that I realized that I learned that's making me a, a better husband, a better leader, hopefully a better father when that time, you know, all, all those types of things. And so really utilizing sports and there are going to be kids that are super talented and can go college and pro and all, all those things, but realizing, man, it's much bigger than that. Um, and so what, what we've kind of done, we've, we've started um, in Apalachicola in, mm-hmm. in Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we've really focused on that athletic piece first. Um, you know, eventually our goal, we, we'd like to establish these after school centers, so to speak, where, where, you know, you're, you're able to give, you know, cause the reality is a big part of why we do what we do is kids have a lack of access to things, right? Not, not every kid one has access to high level skill training, whether it's basketball, baseball, mm-hmm. whatever their sport may be, they don't have access to that. Some kids don't, you know, maybe don't have the best home life, right? So they are getting a great education at school, but then when they come home, there's nobody to reinforce those things. There's nobody to, to, to instill those other, those other skills, other like life skills that are, are, are so important. So the, the, the big picture idea of equal shot is to be a place that can provide all those things Mm -hmm. at no cost to those kids. Right. And Mm -hmm. so you're, you know, able to, to give those opportunities to people who wouldn't otherwise be able to afford that. What was the origin story of this, of this venture? How did this all start? So it really all, it really all started, um, pastor Adrian, Mm -hmm. my mentor, you know, father figure, now my pastor, what we really did was honestly looking at what he did with me. Now I wasn't somebody who came from a lack of, of resource. So it's like my, my, I've been very fortunate, always had food on the table, had, you know, both parents were employed, all, all those things. Like we, I was never lacking in that area, but the things that, you know, the way that he kind of took me under his wing and taught me through basketball, all, all these different things about life and leadership and growth and just all those different things. And so, and the value that 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 added to my life that I wouldn't have had otherwise. And so looking, man, like, what if we could quantify that to a larger scale and provide that to kids? I was fortunate enough to be able to afford that, right? Like we, to, 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 to reach out and find somebody to do that and, and invest in that. But what about the kid who wants it just as badly, who is super bright, has just all, all these things in their future, but can't afford that and maybe doesn't have somebody on their side rooting for mm-hmm. them. And so, and it's always been a real, like a, a specific, you know, thing on my heart to really serve the underserved, the underprivileged, like the people who don't have a voice for themselves. Um, and so that was, that's always kind of been my heart. And, you know, we kind of approached it through basketball, man. Okay. This is how we can kind of do that. And so that's, that's kind of where it all, all birthed from. And so those first steps on the business side of things, how did you guys go about figuring out, all right, this is where we're going to host these, these practices, these trainings, where are the basketballs that we're going to get, you know, where are the running ladders, how are we going to reach out to people? I mean, I'm sure all those things are always that you're, things you're working on and you're trying to figure that out still. But uh, how did you guys go about starting to do that? Yeah, so, you know, it really started um, the more of the nonprofit vision academy was was always our end goal. Now, we had thought that was going to be maybe a couple of years down the line, right? There's a lot of preparation. There's just a lot of things to go into that to try mm-hmm. to start that type of academy, right? It's just, okay, there, there's no way that's going to happen right now. And so we kind of approached it from a business standpoint of just starting a regular like training business where you're just mm-hmm. running group training, individual training, those types of things. And so we did that in Tallahassee. A lot of my family, my, my mom and my brother and, all, and, and, and my grandparents have all lived in Apalachicola. Mm-hmm. And so I have a lot of connections down there. And so I, I wanted to do training here and in Apalachicola and going down there, 
you know, we have, we're fortunate to have a gym in both, both spaces. Pastor Adrian has a gym because he, he used to do the same thing, used to do skill development training and so has access to a gym here in Tallahassee. Um, and then my mom actually oversees a youth community center in Apalachicola, okay. which is the old, um, the old campus of Apalachicola High School, which no longer exists when they consolidated schools. And so it's just was an empty gym sitting there in the city has really fixed it up and it's, it's become a place that kids can go hang out, play basketball, all those things. So we had a location in both spots. So when I went down to Appalachian and started doing some training, just connections that I had made, like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, would you guys be interested? Da, 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 and just started doing some training. And I had kind of had the thought, I was like, you know what? I'm going to hold a camp. I'm just going to see what happens. Like open up to the community. Appalachian is pretty small. Community, so it, it's easy to get the word out. Hey, we're, we're going to do a camp. All ages, there's an elementary division, middle school and high school. And my goal was like, you know what? I want to offer it for free to everybody and I'm just going to try to go out and raise enough money to make it like to pay for my gas, basically yeah. to go back and forth about, you know, hour and a half to two hour drive. And in doing that, it was just crazy. The amount of support that the community and the amount, I mean, we ended up having 80 plus kids come through That's amazing. and be a part. So what went from, you know, it was going to be an hour and a half of training, just basketball, whatever we were able to get 30 brand new basketballs, ladders equipment i was able to feed them every day they came to the camp we you know did awards at the end and bottom shoes and all these different things and so that's when it really hit us we're like oh this 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 may be able to happen now and so it, it's kind of funny we we, we kind of started like running to try to catch up of the momentum of what was happening you know it, it, it and so especially in in Appalachicola, and so we, you know, since then have um, established ourselves as an ag as a nonprofit, a 501 C3. We've put a board together. We've, you know, actually put together, hey, this is our vision and structure for where we want to go um, and all those things. And right now um, in, in Apalachicola, we've got a youth league going with 50 participants. And that's, an, you know, we had, I bought 50 jerseys, right, to, to hold this league mm -hmm. and we planned it all out. In my mind, maybe we'll get 20 to 30. You know, it's the, the age group is only 6 to 11. And so, you know maybe whatever. And we ended up getting 50 like that and actually had to turn away, you know, yeah. 20 plus people because we just ran out of Jersey, but just right. we didn't plan. And so it's just, it's been this thing where it's just, it's incredible. The amount of support, the amount of just people who want to come and, and be a part. And so it's really been something that just kind of jump started. We've just kind of been running to try to play catch up in, you know? So what are some of the things that you guys are holding? You know, you're, you're obviously, you're hosting these, these events and these tournaments you're also doing some training what are some things that you guys offer yeah so we we started the summer like i said with that summer camp um ended up being a two and a half to three month camp where we went two or three times a week had the kids in just basketball based stuff but in that were there's like a theme to every day so for example we just had our our our, our league practice last night the theme was being a good teammate what does that mean on the court what does that bigger picture mean off the court, right? Being able to collaborate with people. How, how, how do you respond when there's conflict? All, all those different things. So throughout the camp, throughout workouts, whatever, there's always a theme like that to help them see, okay, this is much bigger than just improving our basketball skills uh, type thing. So what we've done so far, we've held a uh, camp over the summer. Um, in between the camp and this league, we do just regular workouts, open up the gym for kids to come in two to three times a week um and stuff like that and now we're holding a youth league which is eight weeks long we're coming up to our sixth week um this sunday will be our sixth game day um and so it, it is cool we've got referees and we play games actually this coming week is the playoff so it's it's been a lot of fun and and and, and the kids have had a lot of fun and then on top of that we want to keep doing more camps and kind of this first kind of looking at a roadmap like this first year is really based around the athletic side um, and the heart of that is, right, like it's easy to get any kid excited for a basketball camp mm -hmm. or a league or, or anything like that. Our vision ultimately is much bigger than that. But this is, you know, you start there to build, build momentum, to build relationships with all these parents and these kids that are coming in. So now you go, hey, next school year, man, maybe we're able to establish, hey, we've got an after school program where, yeah, we've got basketball at 445, but directly after school for the first hour, we've got computers and tutors to help the kids with their homework and snacks right mm -hmm. so like kids are being able to 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 be dropped off at the gym get all their homework done have people there to help all those types of things then we go to basketball practice and slowly start building these other pieces where 
you know, we're kind of incorporating them into the practices right now, but actually putting, hey, this is, you know, focus on our schoolwork, you know, maybe things like conflict resolution, taking 20 minutes at the end of practice to do an exercise, right, to, 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 to practice that with the kids. And so that's kind of, you know, the structure of where we're at now, but also where eventually looking to kind of expand is to really, okay, take it from just basketball two or three times a week to this is an everyday thing that you can come to and you're getting tutoring, you're getting basketball, eventually expanding out to, hey, maybe we're, you know, able to partner with people who do dance, performing arts and baseball and, and, and all those different things. But that's kind of where we're at right now. What are all the things that you have a hand in with Equal Shot? Are you involved in every detail? And what are, what is, you know, where, where is your time go? Yeah, right, right now, have my yeah. hand about pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I joke with people, it's like, you know, just with a startup um, mm-hmm. and um, just, you, you just have to kind of have your hands in everything, you know, everything from, you know, we get to Appalach, you know, try to leave Tallahassee by seven so I can get there at nine. Sometimes I'm meeting with, you know, whether it's the superintendent or the city manager, whoever it is to try mm-hmm. to, okay, gain, you know, whether it's financial support or, Hey, how do we get volunteers to make this bigger picture a reality? We're doing that in the morning and then get to the gym practices at five 30, but we got to get there by like 12 or one. Cause we've got to set up all the registration, get the temperature check station and say, we got to mm-hmm. sweep the floor set up, you know, just all these small different things. So you like, you know, it's certain ways you're functioning as the executive director, the janitor, the coach, the, all, all these different things, but it's just, you know, kind of what needs to happen. And, but it's, it's been really cool to see where we're like starting to really build a team. Um, Trip Day, who played with me, he was actually our first hire. Oh, here. wow. Okay. So he, yeah. He's moving. He's, he's a full part of what we're doing is our kind of our director of operations to kind of help take so, some of those smaller tasks, right. To, get that so because it's just getting to a point where there's so many people and we're you know have a good team of coaches both in Tallahassee and in Apalachicola that are able to step in and take roles and want to help out and 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 stuff like that but yeah to answer your question a little bit of everything (laughs) I bet I bet I mean when you're describing it more and more I'm like you know even down to determining like a 20 minute exercise how I'm going to communicate some basic thing about dealing with conflict with a teammate or dealing with how to get my homework done on time, you know, just right. constructing something that communicates a message in 20 minutes time will take part of your day, you know? And so that is just a small part versus getting there, you know, having the logistics set and having practice run to, you know, to our, all, all of our coaches credit. It's, it's been incredible though, the, the way that it's been able to run and, and function and definitely, definitely could not have done it if I didn't have some good help, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure right now, especially it's even more um, tasking on you with, you know, COVID safety and regulations right now. And I'm sure you're getting even more of a crash course on logistics because of that. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know, uh, what, what have been some of the, the biggest successes that you've felt that you've had so far? Obviously just the numbers of involvement, I'm sure is one, but through you personally, that might be more personal. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me, you know, the whole the whole heart behind Equal Shot, like the biggest word that I feel for Equal Shot, and really for me in my life is the word empowerment. Like, man, like how it's just about empowering people, right? Empowering kids, empowering them to be whoever it is that they've been called to be, and really adding value. That's really a key word that we harp on a lot. First thing we talked about with our camp, with our league, all those things is, man, like we, you know, our scoreboard. One one thing we did it, we did it with the with the league participants, but with the coaches, Hey, as coaches, what's our scoreboard, right? What determines whether we're doing a good job because Mm -hmm. all of us, all of us, but one played college basketball, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the coaches that helps is the head coach at Franklin County, the school down there. We're all just competitive basketball people. Right. So it'd be easy to treat it as, Hey, this is like just mainly basketball. We're just trying to get better there, but that's not the heart of this bigger program. So our scoreboard is every kid has fun that we we build community meaning not a single kid feels left out or isolated whether they've never seen a basketball before or they've been playing basketball since they were two right and that every kid leaves the gym having a better understanding of the, uh, how much value they have than when they walked in mm-hmm. and so that's something we talk about the coaches like this is this is what we do at the end of the day if we can do these three things then we win and i told that to the to league participants too every day I remind them hey what's our scoreboard because we do keep score, we keep stats, we have a championship, all those things. But in the midst of all that, 
those aren't the most important things. Cause you're also teaching, right? That in life there's competition. You're going to win, you're going to lose whatever, but really what's the most important things underneath that. That's why we have these different themes as we have all those different things that man, at the end of the day, if you're having fun, if you're building community, being a great teammate, being coachable, all those things and understanding your value, then really you've won, you know? Mm -hmm. And so those are things that we've really, you know, harped on and saw, and in, I, I would say a biggest success and just seeing, I mean, even exact like with this league, seeing that we have, you know, such a mixture of people who are very committed to basketball and very talented versus some kids literally had never played basketball before came and saw their sibling participating and said, I want to sign up, but that everybody is able to have fun and function together and nobody feels left out right you know inevitably there are moments and we're learning and growing where how we can get better in in certain things but for the most part that my biggest one was a man we've really been able to cultivate an environment that really does those things Mm -hmm. Uh, on the flip side what has been one of the biggest challenges so far for you guys that you want to shed light on maybe just so people are aware and could help out yeah yeah i mean biggest challenges i think one um i think just at, at the rate that it's growing Mm -hmm. Um, at at the rate that it's going, trying to keep up one financially, right? That's the side of it. I I just wish I had all the money in the world. So I didn't have to, (laughs) I I could just fund the whole thing and go whatever. But, you know, in order to pull together something like this and offer it for free to anybody like, you know, who can't, who can't afford something like that is, is to, you have to go out and raise that money. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, trying, trying to learn how to do that aspect and and communicate in a way. And it's hard because, you know, you don't want to do that, but really, man, like the heart is like, I just, you know, we're not in it to make money, but it just, things go into it. And to be able to run that, you need people to come in and experts and all these different things. So that's definitely been a challenge. I think another thing too, like realizing most of the, most of us who are kind of on staff and working it right now, we're all young men. Mm -hmm. Right. And so for me as a young white man in society, right. Realizing the things like learning to think through, especially being a Mm -hmm. part of a nonprofit that is called equal shot right? Because the whole part is to give everybody an equal shot that there are going to be things that I overlook. Mm -hmm. One, as a, as a white male and our being a privileged member of society that I just don't think through because not because it's my heart, not because I'm trying to do those things, but that I just overlook without even realizing, because I don't have to think about those things. Mm -hmm. And so being intentional about having a good mixture of majority and minority coaches and staff, whatever. And, um, you know, as far and also having like male and female, staff member. And that's something really, we didn't, we didn't have any female coaches this time around It's something we want to do going forward. Cause there are just things that you naturally not meaning to that you miss and end up not really living up to, Hey, this is what we're trying to do. But, Oh, because we didn't have anybody kind of shine light on that, you kind of overlook certain things. So I think, you know, just, just the biggest perspective, just learning how to think through all those little details, because even though your heart may be to do so, there's just inevitably going to going to be things that you miss, you mm-hmm. know, this is, any of our first time stepping into something like this and, and, you know, running a league and, and doing all these things and handling all these people. And so, you know, just certain aspects that you miss and learn and, and grow and get better. But I would say those two things, probably the biggest challenges. Um, as far as people that you've looked up to or reached out to, to help you along this process, I'm sure, you know, Pastor Adrian, and your wife and, you know, other people close to you, are there any other people you want to shine light on or say, Hey, this, this person gave me a great idea. You know, I've been trying to apply these principles here or there. Yeah. I mean, definitely coach Driscoll and staff mm-hmm. would be yeah. a huge one. I mean, we, uh, I mean, from just the way, you know, a, a lot of one basketball wise, 90% of the stuff we do is all things that they've, taught they've instilled like again basically just running many unf practices over here because they're just incredible but more than that the again all the coaches shirts tucked in the way that you treat people the way you know just all those small little things the culture that they built really looking to that as an inspiration to make that happen here even small things you know trip and i were talking about things you don't think about like every time we went on a road trip whether it was miss carrie or Ryan Burkhart's mom, whatever, somebody always made us a snack bag to take on the plane, right? You just, you walk on the bus, grab your snack bag and go about your day, but actually the preparation that goes into that. And so now we're doing that with these kids, right? Preparing them bags and food and and catering and all these things. And you realize the amount of work that goes into it, but why you do it, because it it should be so seamless that the kids don't have to think about that. That it's just, all these things are just kind of happening and just watching the way that 
they ran their program and being a part of it and knowing what that felt like being a recipient of that, that man, everything was just, I didn't have to worry about a thing. I knew I was going to be taken care of. I knew the coaches would be treated a certain way. I know I was held to a certain standard and being able, how do you then replicate that? And so it's been awesome being able to talk to, I just talked to coach, coach Driscoll for about 30 minutes the other day, just, you know, talking about life and, and just filling them in on what we've been doing, but been able to look, okay, how they were able to run and function really mirroring that because I mean, there's really, again, no better job or example that I can, than I can find in the way that, you know, they have ran their program and trying to mirror that in, in what we do in a lot of mm-hmm. senses. Uh, I'm sure life is really busy right now and you're trying to take care of a lot of different things. What's your day to day kind of look like on a average day for you? Obviously Sunday is going to be different than Thursday or vice, you know, vice versa, but mm-hmm. right. Yeah, well, I mean, just generally throughout the week, I go to Appalachia twice a week. Um, those those days are a little bit longer. I usually leave here about 7, don't get back till about 10, 10.30 at night. Um, so those days I'm pretty much out. Um, but other than that, you know, just trying to get up early enough. Because once the day starts, you know, you don't, you're just so busy you're going, but trying to get up early enough where me and my wife try to, like, you know, have coffee, read our Bibles together, just those types, just to have a moment before the day starts to try to wake up six, six thirty, whatever, before we have to go into work. Um, but pretty much, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of what, you know, my day consists of is, you know, making contacts or building structures. Hey, this is where we want to go. These are people we need to talk to to make that happen. And so really changes from day to day. Some days we're, we're going to Costco to get, you know, I mean, you know, boxes of granola bars and, and, and juice boxes and fruit snacks and all these things and spending two hours packing 200 snack bags to prepare for the next week of camp. You know what I mean? So it really varies day to day, but it's, you know, just trying to think about all through all the different details. Okay. What it's going to take and where we're going and trying to put the, the structure in place. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a lot of, and then, you know, on top of that, obviously leading the, the youth ministry and we meet once a week, every Wednesday night. Um, and so preparing for that and meeting with the leaders there. And so really there's not a set schedule, you know, yeah. but it's, you know, you know, each day you just kind of, all right, this is, these are the three things that I'm doing today. You know, these are the three things, that, three things I've got to do tomorrow. And at the beginning of each week, sitting down and be like, all right, this is what needs to get done this week. And this is how we'll divide up the time. Cause otherwise then, you know, if you're not planned with it, you're going to run out of time to do all that. Absolutely. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm sure you, you set that schedule, but then, you know, something comes in the way and you got to get pulled in this direction or what that, or whatnot. Um, is there anything else you want to share about Equal Shot or you want the public to know uh, about it, um, whether just to plug the, you know, the business or, or anything? Yeah. Well, I mean, shameless plug, man. We are, we are definitely looking for support of all kinds. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, support, you know, volunteer wise, whether there's anybody who's watching this in this area, you know, to, in the world to build, you know, the, the academy and the after school program, whatever, it just takes people and good people who have that same heart, who are going to really carry that culture. Well, um, there's finances that go behind it. So the financial part of there's that piece, you know, that just logistically that things just, you know, need to get paid for in jerseys and food and all, all these different things. And so any type of support like that, I mean, anything we can take and get that people are willing to give again. Cause you know, we like to view it as man, like we really want to build in in the same way I talked about how I stepped into UNF and family. We want to build man. Like this really is a family and our mission is to add value to these communities, to build up kids who otherwise may go on a more negative path to be no, like these are leaders and community changers and people who will, give back and add value to the places that they are. And that, that's the type of culture and, and change that we really want to bring. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, the, the logistics of what that takes um, is, you know, all sorts of different things. And so if, if, if anybody is, is ever interested in learning more, we do have a website, it's equalshotacademy.com. Um, and, you know, my, my contact information is on there. All our, our information is on there. And so, you know, there's all sorts of different ways that, that people can get involved. And, you know, we're really excited for what's coming up and, and, and the momentum that's already happened and, you know, excited to look back. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I want to five years from now, I, I don't want to look back and be like, yeah, we did a great league and held a great camp and it was fun and we did awards and had a championship, but I want to look back in five years, like we've actually been able to make a dent in this community and start to change the culture for the better. And that kids who are in our program are 
better off, are more self-aware, have higher reading comprehension, have better conflict resolution skills than they did when they started. That's the real win for us. And so all those is figure, okay, now how do we go and do that? And really, you know, beginning to put those structures in place. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, So many different things, so many different, you know, things you want to achieve, but you know, regardless, you're putting a lot of work into your personal life and you're putting a lot of work into your business life right now, right out of coming out of UNF, which is cool to see. And I know a lot of people would say you're a great representative of North Florida and North Florida basketball yourself, your family. So uh, blessings to you and your family, your business. um, And, and hopefully we'll be seeing you sooner than later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Thanks for listening to Talent Talk. Find the complete archive along with feature articles on unfospreys.com by going to fans and Talent Talk podcast series under the Multimedia tab.